Hello viewers, it's Super GT here. Welcome to my very first Project Cars 2 video. So the big question really for those of you on console is, is it playable on a controller? And if you want a very quick answer, yes, it is playable. But you probably will want to tweak the settings. Um, in fact, you'll probably be tweaking the settings for quite a while. In fact, what I'll do first, I'll show you the settings that I use and that I've found to be quite good. So if we go over to the controls menu, so as you can see, we are on the controller, we're on Xbox One. So I'll very quickly just go through them and then explain after. So steering dead zone zero, sensitivity 25, throttle dead zone zero, sensitivity five, braking dead zone zero, brake sensitivity 25, uh, clutch I'm not using in the game, so I'm just going to leave that at 10 and 25. Speed sensitivity 100, damper saturation 100, controller damping 38, controller vibration 100, minimum shift time left at zero, and an RPM gear display, uh, yes. So those are the settings I've used, and I've been fairly comfortable with them actually, and I've done quite a lot of races online, and the car felt good. So, very quick explanation maybe, steering dead zone is just how much range in the centre of the stick movement um, doesn't do anything. So if it's zero, then every tiny bit of movement on the stick will actually correlate to the car moving. A bigger dead zone, uh, nothing will happen for the first 10% of movement either way. I'll just leave that at zero. Sensitivity, this is quite important, it's, well it's one of the most important settings. But when you're tweaking, uh, first thing I would say, um, when you're tweaking your settings, you really do have to take multiple uh, settings into con uh, consideration. So I'd say the ones you really want to do together are steering sensitivity and let's see, and controller damping. Those are the two that I found I had to tweak the most uh, to get it all to work. But yeah, steering sensitivity says 50% is the ideal if you want your controller to match what the car does exactly, as in you turn a certain amount, the car turns a certain amount. But I found that it was really quite twitchy that way, so I put it down a bit. Throttle dead zone, I don't think there's any point in having dead zone for throttle and brake, just put them straight to zero. For sensitivity, I thought the car was really sensitive on throttle. Normally it's 50, so I put it way down to 5. Brake sensitivity, the same thing, I thought it was very sensitive. Not as sensitive as the throttle, so I've only put it down to 25, but still, it was 50, so I put it down by quite a lot. Clutch, as we've said, we've left that. So speed sensitivity is quite important. This is basically, when you're going at high speeds and you're going through a fast corner, how twitchy is the car? When you go through a fast corner, you don't want it to be twitchy, so... Um, you want to put that all the way up. If you put it all the way down, the car, you, you're going to go through a fast corner. You want to correct it slightly and the car will just spin off the other way. So put that up really high, put it to 100. That's what I th thought is best. Damper saturation. This is, it didn't seem to make too much difference on the controller. I'm not sure. It does say in the description on the side, this is it's, um, a value for making the wheel feel heavier. So I don't know if it means just for wheel users or just, if it means the, the wheel inside the car. But I didn't don't think it really made much difference. I just put it to 100. Now this is a really important setting here, controller damping. So this is, if you remember Project Cars 1, this was a really big problem, turning from left to right or right to left, how quickly you could do it. And this, the standard setting is quite high. It's near a 60, I think. But I thought that was too high, so I put it all the way down to 38. And if I'm completely honest, it's still tiny bit twitchy but I felt that if I put it too high the car feels very vague and I can't really sense the oversteer and at least on 38 I can drive quite well actually I can get around the track and it feels okay and if it does oversteer I can correct it because if it's too high the setting I feel like I can't quite correct the car and it stays in a slide for too long so those are the settings that I'm using oh actually one more uh, controller vibration you want to feel as much as possible when you're on the controller. So I put that all the way up to 100. If you're going over curbs, rumble strips, whatever, you want to know about it just so that you have every every kind of input from the car is translated through to you. So put that one up to 100 and that should hopefully help you.
So those are the settings that I use and maybe we'll just have a quick go here and see how it goes. So I'm just going to have a quick drive here of uh, Hockenheim in the GT3 car. Just kind of show you how playable it is on the controller. So using the chase cam actually, and I've not seen really anyone on YouTube do this, and um, not many people really opting for the chase cam, but it is playable. I mean the chase cam isn't really a strength of this game, but for me it's one of I'm always most comfortable in the chase cam and most games. So I'm really trying to make it work. Um, you can see here, just going into the corner quite nicely. You do have to be very, very smooth. The, the, the times that the car will try to fight you, specifically when downshifting and turning in, that's where you have to be really, really careful and really smooth. But I would say, when you're testing out your settings, if you're changing the settings slightly, so the, the steering settings, what I'll say is you have to be very, very patient. So don't drive around two corners spin out and say alright those settings are rubbish you have to give it a good lap or two before you really can write off a certain setting uh, so, yeah, so you do have to be very very patient when doing the settings it's very frustrating really to have to do this when you buy a game you know you don't you don't want to be sitting there for the first couple of hours buying a new game having to tweak everything but unfortunately the reality of this game is that you do have to do that but once you do do it, once you do get the right settings, it does feel okay. It does feel good and it's definitely playable. It probably is a lot better on a wheel once you get it up, you know, set, up, set up properly. Well, it will be better on a wheel. It is, it is a simulation game. So 100% it will be better on a wheel. But for those of you on a console, you just want to play it on the controller. Is it playable? Yes, it definitely is. You just have to find your sweet spot. Hopefully my settings will be good for you. I did try them in a couple of different cars. So I tried it in Rallycross. Rallycross will actually work quite well. And I tried it in an LMP1 car. And all three cars, it works fine. Uh, these exact settings, I didn't have to change them. So you see there, I, I downshifted too early. Now that isn't really a problem with the setup. That's just me not concentrating properly. Um, it is a hard game so again you do have to be patient it's not just going to be an easy ride around every lap you do have to put the time in so I mean you got people like Black Panther who will go who will lay into the game completely and in many ways he's right because there are problems with the game but at the same time I don't think he's very patient at all and I don't think he really gave it a proper you know he didn't sit down for a good length of time, tweak the setting for a while um, and be patient and wait for the good settings to come to him, he just kind of discounted it very quickly and one thing I would say though is if you have a choice between buying this on the PC and, and console, 100% buy it on the PC 100% just do not buy it on the Xbox or the PS4 if you have a PC that you can play this on Gonna spin out again, but again, it's, it's not easy content, um, commentating whilst racing at the same time. So, as I said earlier, you do have to be really fully concentrating when playing this game. But yeah, if you have the choice between PC and console, just buy on the PC because it just works a lot better on the PC, it's a lot better. And but that's to say, uh, it's not to say that it's a total disaster on the console because it's not, it's not, it's nothing quite as bad as what it was. Uh, Project Cars 1, it's nothing like that. It does take time to get your settings, but once you get them, yes, you can definitely play this game. But that's pretty much the end of this video, guys. I do hope you found it useful. Do let me know your thoughts as well, of course, on whether you like this game, whether you're enjoying it, or maybe not. Maybe you don't quite enjoy it. Maybe you can't quite get the settings down. Uh, I, look for I look forward to hearing your thoughts on that, because um, I think the community is fairly split on that. So I'm just going to go flying down here and not bother braking and just absolutely kill myself. Just go to a dead stop. Right, that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you're new to the channel, of course, uh, do subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.